GFX gods and GFX demons, GFX goats and GFX semens. Today I wanted to share with y'all something that I wish I'd known right from day one because no lie, this is the best feature in Photoshop. So we all know about Photoshop layer styles, right? If you don't, then you must still be a GFX semen. Don't be ashamed though mate, we all had to start somewhere. In fact, this video is actually semen friendly. You don't need much design practice at all. You'll still be able to benefit from the source that I'm currently heating up, whether a goat or a semen. So most of us designers know roughly how Photoshop layer styles work. Layer styles being another word for the blending options that you can tweak when trying to modify a layer's appearance. Most commonly used for text, but they do work on anything, images, shapes, whatever. Photoshop's layer styles are often the first thing a designer is taught to use when learning how to GFX, and yet for some strange reason I still see designers on a daily basis somehow fucking their drop shadows up. I was about to pull up some images of drop shadows that make me want to travel back in time and never be born as a human being, but I'm actually stopping myself. I'm being respectful and I'm assuming that they lost their eyesight vaping off brand jewel pods. Let's take a moment of silence for them. But I know there's a lot of us out there like myself that somehow had no idea that you could actually save your own layer styles. The fact that you can keep folders filled with crazy custom layer effects which you can then turn into textile packs and then you can use those packs to drag and drop the effects straight onto any empty layer to create insane effects in seconds is something that all designers deserve to know about. I literally open up Photoshop and I'm sourcing like Post Malone with visual swag available in milliseconds. Sussing, sussing. If you haven't already, go follow your boy on Instagram, it's griffin underscore gfx. You'll see how I've been using my textiles for a while to create different typography effects. I post all my artwork up on Instagram first and I listen to the comments when you guys request tutorials. So definitely go drop your boy a follow, show some love, alright? Before I begin this tutorial, I want to share with you guys my brand new psychedelic inspired text pack called Sykes. It's made specifically for typography, it's available on my website for £5 and it includes a load of colourful and trippy styles that will help you create dope text effects within seconds. I've also made a free version which includes a few random styles from within the pack because I want everyone to be able to download and play with at least a few of these styles. Definitely give one of the two packs a download because looking at how pre-existing text styles have been set up and all the settings that I've used is a great way to learn how to make your own. You could even use my layer styles as a foundation and make your own adjustments from there, that's no problem. The first step is to like the video. Make sure you've done this otherwise Satan's gonna come and kidnap your cat, okay? Alright, now that you smashed that like button, let's crack open a new canvas and type out some text that we're gonna start applying the layer styles to. To begin working on your layer styles, you want to right click on the desired layer and select blending options. You could also double click on the layer just to the right of its name. Ok so this is where all the magic happens, trust me. I won't have time in this video to teach you every possible style, YouTube don't pay me enough for that, but I'll do my best to explain how the most commonly used styles work. If your blending options aren't in this order or if you're missing any, hit the effect symbol in the bottom left and reset your list. The first style is Bevel and Emboss. This will make your text look slightly three dimensional by adding shadows and light into the layer. The depth and size can be adjusted to make this effect more or less extreme. This is the main thing I use when creating the chrome effect. I'll try to remember to leave a link to my chrome text tutorial in the description so check that out if you want to learn how to master the chrome effect or to download my free chrome pack. You can also add contour or a pattern. Patterns are especially useful once you've started downloading some of your own patterns from the interwebs. I'm planning to keep adding assets to griffingfx.com so soon you'll be able to get all of your GFX source from your master. <laughs> I tried to keep all of my downloads super cheap because I know that artists don't make any money and if you follow me on the gram then I'm going to start doing random pack giveaways on my stories so keep your third eyes open for that one. I'm actually really close to hitting 10k followers so if you're not following pause the video right now you have 10 seconds to follow or your third eye shuts forever. Next up is stroke. This will apply an outline to your layer. You can adjust its size and colour and decide whether it's going to be on the outside, the inside or right in the centre. Colour and gradient overlays. This will simply transform your layer's colour. The gradient option allows you to fade your colours but don't let your colours fade you, okay? Pattern overlay. This is the same as the texture overlay effect, just it isn't connected to Bevel and Emboss. You also get to change the blend mode and the opacity with this one. Great. Outer Glow. This will make your layer shine. It's a quick and easy way to have your text emit light. It's the opposite of the inner glow, which I skipped past. If you guys want me to dive deeper into some of these styles, just drop a like and leave a comment so I know. 
Maybe we could start a whole layer style series where I pick different layer styles and try and teach you how to create them. It will be a little fuck to teach though to be honest because no one knows how to make layer styles, not even Mishka. The trick is to just mess around with all of the options until Photoshop blesses you and then you spend the next hour trying to work out what caused the layer to look the way it does. But I don't know, maybe we could make some experimental episodes. And right at the bottom is the drop shadow. This is probably the most used effect on Photoshop. It's so fucking simple. <laughs> like I said, some designers still completely butcher it. I don't know how it's possible, but it happens. When done correctly, it will make your layer look like it's hovering above the background instead of being flat on the canvas. Okay, so that's a basic overview on how the layer styles work. Like I said before, drop a like if you want a more in-depth tutorial. I could make this a whole series. But for now, I think you get the basic idea on how to set up your layer styles. You can go ahead and download my pack to help you make your own. Now I'm going to show you how to save these layer styles locally to your computer and then how you can go ahead and turn one of the folders into a layer style pack so that you can distribute it on the internet or share it with your friends, whatever you want to do. So here you go, I've opened up the layer styles panel and I have everything how I like it. I'm going to go over to the right and hit new style. You can name the style whatever you want, so let's call this one subscribe. You want to make sure that this middle one is ticked, in fact you want to make sure all of these are ticked hit ok you can close that box and right at the very bottom you will have your new style if you want it to be part of one of your folders then make sure it's actually connected to the folder now if you close photoshop and open it back up you will always have this layer style which is just one click away from being added to any layer on photoshop to export this layer style pack ready to share with the rest of the world you want to make sure you've selected all of the layer styles that you'd like to export by selecting the first and last layer style whilst holding shift it doesn't always work if you just select the folder so make sure you have them all selected individually once there's a blue square around all the layers you'd like to export you want to go and find the three white lines up in the top right corner left click and then hit export selected styles It'll be saved as a .asl file, so now all you have to do is think of a name and hit save. Bang, there you go guys. I hope this video helped some of you out. I know a lot of you have been commenting on my Instagram asking me how I've been making these layer styles, so there you have it, alright? I'm sorry for my wacky upload schedule at the moment, guys. Oh shit, did I really just call it an upload schedule? I ain't going to lie, I've actually never had a schedule in my life, I'm way too ADD for that shit. In two weeks time, me and my girlfriend are actually moving into a house together, so that's going to be insane. And when we move out, I really have no excuses not to be grinding, so expect a lot more content and a lot more ideas. i got loads of ideas in my head to be fair, so it's time for me to start executing them. Thanks for subscribing guys, we're almost at 150k. I don't know if I'll have a video up in time for 150k, but I do plan on making an update video soon either way. And until next time, that's me out. Peace.